we're going to make our mushroom with a combination of coiling and pinch pot. So I'm going to coil the stem of the mushroom and then I'm going to create a pinch pot and put it for the top, the umbrella piece of the mushroom. So I've just rolled out some quick coils um, and I'm just going to put them into the shape that I want from my mushroom. Now I want quite a nice wide base. I'm not worried about anything too round. I, I actually would like something a bit more organic in my shape. Um, so I'm going to start with a kind of oval-ish shape um, for my base, but I'm going to basically freehand um, this build um, as I go for the shaping of the mushroom. I'm just mixing up um, some slip here that I have in my pot. It's dried out, so I've just added a little bit more water to it and am remixing. Um, I'm not going to worry about scoring between the coils, but I will add a little bit of slip um, just for a little bit of security um, with the clay. It is quite wet, so I don't need a lot. Um, just, a, just a tiny bit will be more than enough. Um, there we go. So I have slip mixed. I'll just put a little bit around where I'm going to coil up. I may need a few more coils, so I might be rolling out a bit more as I go. So, go around. Um, you noticed I pinched the bottom of the first coil, just gives me a little bit of a ramp so I can be a little quicker with my coiling and just keep going around rather than doing one coil at a time. I'm going to slip on the ends just to join the next coil to it and we carry on around. So, go. Because this is fairly straight up, with the sides a little bit on the in. I'm, I'm probably going to go up about six coils. We'll see, maybe to the end of this coil. Um, that might be a good, a good place to stop. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to chop that end. Okay, now I've got those lined up on top of each other, now it's just a case of blending. Um, so I like to use a flat knife tool that I have. Um, it used to be my parents from when we used to go camping. Um, it's kind of, if you only had one tool it would be this one. This is my favourite tool that I use um, when I'm building. So um, I use the flat side, put my hand on the opposite side, and then I scrape up. And I go the full height. I'm not scraping um, between each of the coils. I'm doing the full height. Um, and I am making sure that it scrapes so that you can't see where the joins are anymore. And just hold the top coil down so that it doesn't fly off as you scrape. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm not overly worried about neatness on the inside, but I am not being especially messy either. Um, with this because it makes it much easier to see how well things are joined if you're a little bit neater with it. Okay. Now I have 
got um, where the coils joined at the bottom here. I want to make that join disappear as well. So I'm just going to blend that together there. And having turned it over, I can see I missed a bit. Make sure it's all joined. Now I'll turn it back. Put it back in the kind of shape that I wanted. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the outside. Now I blend it upwards on the inside, so I'm going to go down on the outside. Um, and this just helps add a little bit of strength um, to the joins in the coils. Makes it a little less likely that you'll get um, cracks following the coil uh, shapes. going to go tidy this up a little bit on the outside. And I can use a rubber kidney as well. So what we're after is it to look like one piece of clay and not a whole bunch of coils stacked on top of each other. So I want it nice and smooth. There we go. Now I'm looking at the shape and I'd like to make a little change to it because at the moment it looks very solid on the ground and mushrooms quite often have just a little curve at the bottom of their shape so I am going to build that in a little bit by just altering this shape. I'm pressing my thumb against um, the palm of my hand um, to press out and stretch the coils that I've already put on there so that they reshape a little bit to give me that kind of more mushroom shape that I'm after. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go around with my knife and press the bottom edge in. Now we've got to be a little bit careful because this shape is actually a really tricky shape with coiling because if the clay is too wet it will do this shape naturally. Um, as the weight presses down the bottom will come out and do this shape naturally. Um, so I'm going to have to be really careful as I coil up and certainly when I put the weight of the cap on that the stem is dry enough to support that extra weight without um, collapsing and becoming even wider um, and, and, and more bulbous at this bottom. Um, so I'm going to have to watch that a little bit, um, but I still want the shape, so I'm going to do it on purpose anyway um, and just keep an eye on it. I'm just going around the inside to make sure as I've pushed it in, I haven't lifted the bottom edge of the coil up so that the it's it's only touching on the on the outer edge of the coil. So this I'm just making sure it's got a flat part of the coil touching the board. There we go. And that will do. Because I've changed that shape um, and essentially made it weaker, 
I am going to dry that set of coils off and then come back and build up. Okay, now I've dried this off so it's a bit stronger. I've dried, I've concentrated the drying on the bottom because I don't want to dry this top edge too much as I'm adding more coils to it. Um, so we're going to go again, smidge in a slip, and then add the next lot of coils. So I've done a bit of reshaping um, and tidying. I'm not tidying too much because I'm going to put um, some added details on this bottom here um, and texturing. Um, so I'm not worrying too, too much about how smooth I'm getting it at the moment. Um, but I'm going to go up. I think I'm going to need another two coils um, to get this to the height that I want. This needs to dry again. It's, it's you can almost see as I'm handling the clay it's a little bit sticky um, so I need to give this a chance to dry again so I'm going to take it over and just give it a blast with my heat gun um, to give me a bit of extra strength to make sure everything doesn't collapse down as I add the weight on top. So next up roll a couple more coils and dry it out. Okay, now that I have my stem, the shape and height that I want, I'm going to add the texture that I want to the bottom. Now I've got a bunch of um, bits of wet clay that I've pulled off um, when I've been doing the scraping, so I've just peeled them off the knife. So I'm just going to put a few pieces of these on because they're already a bit on the wet side. Uh, that one's a bit dry. Um, so I might need a bit of slip for some of this, but the wet ones, I can just 
kind of make a circle and then pull, drag my thumb or my finger through it. And I'm going to line these up a little and layer them. Okay, next step for my mushroom is to create the cap. So I'm just going to do a big pinch pot for this. Um, and again, I'll kind of decide exactly what cap I want as I go. But I'm letting my um, stem dry a little bit while I'm doing this as I need to be sure that that is strong enough to take the weight of this cap. And you can see I've got quite a large ball of clay here. Um, so there's quite a bit of weight in this. I might trim it back, we'll see. Might take some weight out of it. But. Um, because I don't want the cap too big, otherwise you're not you're gonna lose a lot of the stem. So it may be that I even have to go a little bit higher, but we'll see. Um, so I'm just slapping this clay into a nice ball shape to begin with. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and now, because I am not trying for a full round, I want a semicircle. Um, I'm going to start with a semicircle kind of shape by flattening the bottom. And then we're into pinch pots. So pressing thumb in. I'm pressing out into my hand. If you do this against a table, remember that you're going to get flat every time you press against the table. So make sure that you're doing this, uh, the pinch potting, 
the pinching on um, or towards the kind of shape that you want. So uh, I'm starting from the middle. You see I'm using my knuckles here and pressing against my palm. So I'm basically pinching with my knuckles and my palm together. Um, and that's what's making the pinch to make the clay a little bit thinner. Now, I'm thinking I might want a little bit of a pointy top on this. So I'm going to start forming by putting one of my knuckles up a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too thin. I can feel this actually getting a bit on the thin side in the middle there, so I have time to work outwards. I'm quite liking where this shape is heading on its own with the quite nice downward cap. As I pinch this, it's going to go open up quite a bit more. And it's whether, at what point I want that to stop. If it gets to a size where it's the size that you want, but you still have extra clay in it, you can always just come in, um, stop at that point and come in and take clay away. You don't have to keep going. Um, you just let it dry off a little bit. Um, and then use, um, either a rubber kidney, well, metal kidneys probably more than rubber, um, or ribbon tools, turning tools, um, and take clay, excess clay away that way, rather than pinching it out. I quite like the thicker edge that I've got going on here as well. But I think I might end up smoothing the cap so that I get rid of some of these pinch marks. I'm quite happy with that as a kind of hat. Um, the cap for my mushroom. I even like the kind of slope to it at the moment, so although I might take it the other way. I'm not sure. Maybe like that. Do I want to go? Actually, yeah. a little bit higher actually. So I'm going to have to use my coil I have left to take this up a, a little bit so that the cap sits where I want it. So let's go and see whether this is enough coil left or whether I need a bit more. much. Hopefully one of these little
There we go. A little bit higher. Okay, so let's work on this. I'm going to take, smooth some of this off because I'm going to then put the little, um, they called gills mushrooms, the, the frilly bits on the underneath of the cap. I'm going to carve some of them in. So this clay, this is still quite thick so that I've got room to be able to put the frilly bits in so I can carve in and, and cut them out basically um, of the clay. Um, I think I'm going to make sure this edge is where I want it. So the edge is quite thick and heavy, so I might end up taking a little bit of that weight out as I'm doing the, the inside of the cap. So I like the idea of that kind of curling over the edge of the textured section. Okay. So I'm just using my knife again. Although I could use one of the wooden tools with the kind of knife ends on them. And to start with, I'm literally going to put the lines in, but I'm going to be really quite rough with it. In fact, I think I might pull some clay out here and lift sections up. So this will take some of the weight out, but it will also help add a bit more depth to the texture. side done. Now I'm just going to take this slightly thicker bit and curl it in a little I think. Now, because I didn't put a base um, on the stem of the mushroom, um, I don't have to worry about putting a hole in for the air to escape. So it's safe to just sit um, this cap on top. Um, I think I'm gonna dry things off a little though before I put them together, because at the moment they are very wet. Um, 
and they're still moving a lot, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but with the, all of this weight on here, especially with the extension that I did, I think I want to give it a bit of a dry. So I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun again and I will be back. Okay, so I've actually dried both pieces a little bit, um, but I've left the cap still a bit on the flexible side. Um, so I'm going to pop quite a bit of slip on here. I'm not, I've already got a bunch of texture so I haven't scored because there's, there's lots of texture on the inside of the cap and on the top of the coils because I didn't smooth the top edge so. Some slip into the cap as well where I think it's going to touch on the stem. And now we'll pop the cap into place. There we go. So it's kind of naturally going at an angle. Um, and I need to decide whether I like it. I will just make sure that join the top between the cap and the stem is nice and neat, well not neat but joined. Last thing to do is to add my maker's mark. So I'll just pop this on over here. And there we go. The mushroom is all finished.